If you are one of the million QuickBooks Online do-it-yourself business owners, and if you've ever had when you get to the end of the year, you're dealing with your tax professional, you give them your books and tell them, hey, I'm ready to go, and all of a sudden they come back to you with tons and tons of questions of I need to get this cleaned up or that cleaned up. Well, I'm gonna to present to you today one of the biggest challenges that I always find when I jump into a person's books. Now, this is a real world example. And what we're gonna be talking about specifically is why is it important to actually take the time and put a vendor or payee name on every transaction that you do inside QuickBooks Online? Hi guys, I'm Matthew Fulton with Parkway Business Solutions and QB Community Live, the Facebook group. Now today's video, specifically what I'm going to be sharing with you, is why it's important to have a vendor name on every single transaction. I'm gonna show you inside QuickBooks Online what we as accountants look at so you as a business owner can see it, and then I'm gonna follow up at the very end for the accountants and bookkeepers that are gonna watch this to show you ways that you can quickly correct this using our accountant tools and the books review built into QuickBooks Online for Accountant. So why don't we go ahead and dive in. So the first thing I wanna show you is what I'm talking about. As an accountant, we have this special tool, this capability that's called our books review. It's something newer in QuickBooks Online, and it gives us the ability that we can kind of go through each month and start to pull out and find some of the common problems or challenges that we see in financials. Uh, the one we're gonna focus on today is the transactions without payee names. So inside of here, this will give us a list of every single transaction. In this scenario for this year, this client has 124 different transactions that do not have a payee name assigned to it. So you're probably wondering, what does it matter? If it's been assigned to the appropriate account, what does it matter? Do, why do we need to have that? Well, I'm gonna show you that. I'm also gonna tell you the reason this traditionally happens is because when you're, if a, you're a do-it-yourselfer and you're in the bank feed and you're categorizing transactions, heck, it's a lot easier just to put an account than to try to put a payee name in, especially if it doesn't already exist inside your company file. So while you're saving yourself time right then, you're not helping yourself in the long run. And here's what I mean by that. If I was to come up and take a look, let's say we ran basically an expense by vendor summary for your business. Well, what we would see is a different list of all the different vendors, but at the very bottom, you're gonna see not specified. So when I click on these, that means out of this total amount here, we have $40,000 worth that don't have any kind of name to it. So the reason this becomes super important is as accountants, when we have these different names in there, we actually have more powerful tools we can manipulate and move things around. And the reason we'd wanna do that is, maybe you have something that's been classified incorrectly, and we need to go in and move all those transactions to a different account. When we have proper payee names on them, we can actually see that and move them quicker to be more efficient and do a better job for you. This also is going to be able to help you, like if you looked at the same report, and you tried to evaluate over a year's time by month, what's your spend by vendor, because you wanna figure out ways to save money, if you don't have names on these, that's gonna be really difficult to do. Now I wanna go and I'm gonna show you another one of the tools that we have as accountants. It's called a reclassified transaction tool. And I've set this up to where I've gone into this specific account for job supplies. And you can see that the customer vendor name is missing on so many of these transactions until I start to get further down. As I scroll to the top, what this does is this gives me the ability, I could select an actual vendor name, filter down, and I can pick and choose which transactions if I need to take and reassign them to a different account. Again, this is going to help us clean up your financials, get you better numbers, and ultimately with those numbers, you can do better budgeting, uh, you're gonna have a better chance of getting loans, you're gonna have a better understanding of what's happening inside your business. So hopefully I maybe scared a couple business owners into recognizing, hey, it's worth taking the time to put those payee names in when you're doing, if you're going to be dealing with the bank fees and pulling transactions in yourself. Now, rest assured though, this next part, it is gonna be for the bookkeepers and the accountants, the ones that are, are tasked with trying to clean this stuff up. I wanna show you real quickly, inside of that uh, book's review, 
one way you can go back in to assign these names quickly to save time and help your clients out. So if we go back to our book review that I was showing you before, our transactions with pay, without payee names, as I start to click into these, I can go in and reassign a different name. Now, if there's a whole bunch more, uh, more than just like a single page worth, if you click on the show more, it's actually gonna pull up a page like you're seeing here. So as we go through, what this will allow me to do is I can actually come in and it look, it's still not as fast, but you can basically come in and select and go add a payee name. So here I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna go 76, find it, and we go apply. What this will do is on those specific transactions, it's gonna apply the names and get rid of them for you. Now, another quick trick while you're trying to process all this information, what you can do is if you have a whole bunch that are going to the same place, click the top box, then go to the very last one, and while holding down your shift button, you can click the bottom one, it's gonna select all of those. And that's fundamentally true throughout all of QuickBooks. Now let's say you don't have a name in there if it doesn't exist already, so let's, for the heck of it, we'll see if this one's in here, we'll go add payee, we'll go 99 cent, and we don't have it, right? So we'll go 99 cent store. We can add the new vendor right away, and company name, display name uh, is the important parts of it, and then you can save it and then apply. Now, once you've gone through all of these and you've basically assigned payee names or added payee names to all the ones that you can figure out, if you have questions on certain transactions, hey, maybe you're seeing a name and you're questioning whether they categorized it correctly, what you can do is you can select any of the transactions that you may have questions on and then come up to ask a client up here. Click on the ask a client and it's gonna say questions about payee names. You can add in your own details, of course, and it's gonna send over a request to them specifically saying for each of the ones you checked off, I need you to tell me a little bit more about this. What's the deal? Like what's the pay for? What was the expense for? So forth. So this would then be sent off and notify the client that they have something to help you with. It's a pretty cool feature they've recently added inside of here, of course. Okay, so I've basically gone in and I, I processed all the big ones so I can go through now and let's go back and take a look at those, those other uh, reports and such. So we saw before the total we had, there was like 40,000. If I refresh this again, we should now see at the very bottom here, it's gone down to 2,000 instead. Then the last area again, of course, for us, we go to that reclassified transactions area again. Let's come back into here. We'll pretend like we're changing the date, go find transactions. And now we can see again, our list is so much shorter through here. So we can see things a lot faster where all the transactions are actually supposed to be going to. All right, so let's do a quick recap of why it's important to have a vendor name on every single transaction. As the business owner, having that extra bit of detail is gonna give you the opportunity to pull reports with way more useful information. You're gonna be able to see exactly per vendor how much you're spending. And whether that's a store or perhaps it's a contractor, that can be extremely important. With contractors, if it's 1099, if you forget to put the payee name on there, when it comes time to do that 1099 reporting at the end of the year, you won't be able to do it as easily. And if you don't assign all those expenses to the right vendor and you don't put the 1099 out, well, that's gonna be expensive. You know, It can come back onto you and you have to pay for it. It also gonna to have to deal with your workers' comp audit, so forth. This also gives the ability, again, with stores, let's say you need to find a transaction amount. You can try to do searching by a dollar amount, but when you have things listed under an actual vendor or payee name, things are a lot easier to find, of course. And then for the accountants, on our side of it, when we dive in, when we're doing a review of all of your financials, one of the things that I always do is I pull up a profit and loss by month, and I'm gonna look for different trends across every single account. And if I see something that fluctuates up or down too much, I'm gonna click it and take a look at it. Then the second part I do after that is I go straight into my reclassify transactions tool, and I'm gonna go account by account by account, and I sort by the customer name, to see if there's any chance where if a certain payee name has been used across two different accounts, I look into it to see if maybe one thing was categorized incorrectly. 
This helps us find different errors in your books, but gives us in a very efficient way to be able to solve and clean those up. So hopefully you found this video to be helpful. If you did, do me a favor and in the comments below, please let me know. If you have additional questions, go ahead and put those down there as well. And if you haven't already, please do me a favor, be sure to like and subscribe to this channel and don't forget to hit the bell so you are notified every time we release a new video. We appreciate you watching today and as always, here's wishing you all a very successful week.